Hello and welcome to today's video where I'll be covering my webcomic process in Clip Studio Paint. In this series of videos, I'll be going over how you can use Clip Studio Paint to convert your traditional layout comic into a vertical comic or work in both formats simultaneously. For today, I'll discuss a few more useful tips and tools you can use for formatting your comic project. Links to additional tutorials, as well as everything mentioned in today's video, will be down in the description below. An issue you may experience when trying to juggle multiple comic formats is maintaining consistency between panels across the different formats. As we discussed previously, designing panels to work in one format often means having to go back and manipulate them to fit in another format. Some artists may not have an issue with slight variance between the different versions, but others may want to make their panels as uniform as possible to cut down on editing time. As such, it can be useful to have both formats in mind when creating your panels initially. One way you can achieve uniform panels between both formats is by utilizing file objects. You can convert your panel folder into a file object by right-clicking, then save it somewhere on your device where you plan to keep all of your panels. Once the file object is created, copy and paste it onto your traditional and vertical canvases. Then, right-click it in the Layers panel and go to File Object, Open File of File Object. This will open up the version of the file object that we can make edits to. Now, by drawing on this version of the file object and hitting Save, those changes will also happen on our other canvases simultaneously. For additional info on working with file objects, check out my video, How to Keep Your Options Open with File Objects, on the official Clip Studio Paint YouTube channel. What makes this especially useful for consistency between formats compared to a regular copy-paste is that it'll transfer over any adjustments made from one canvas to the other. If I make all three canvases visible here, and make some size adjustments to my panel, then hit save, you can see that those changes will carry over to both my traditional and vertical comic at the same time. By doing it this way, you can tweak the dimensions of the panel in both formats simultaneously, ensuring that it stays consistent and looks ideal for both versions at once. When working with text bubbles across different comic formats, you'll inevitably find that you have to get creative with their size and placement to avoid making any big changes. Typically, text bubbles in traditional comics are placed very strategically to fit in the frame of the panels they're associated with and to not block too much of the artwork, while text bubbles in vertical comics are often laid directly on top of panels and their frames, often hanging over the edges or intersecting with multiple panels at once. When I bring vertical comic text over to a traditional comic, I find that one useful way to save on space is to combine my bubbles into groups when it's appropriate. With Clip Studio Paint's text bubble tools, you can simply nudge one bubble into the other, and as long as they're on the same layer, it'll automatically combine them for you and draw a new border around them. Another way to save space is to adjust the text size across formats. Since traditional comics are usually designed for physical print, they can typically use smaller text than vertical comics, which are made to be read on small screens. As such, you'll want to be sure that your vertical comic text is readable on phones and tablets, and not just on your computer where everything is zoomed in. One really useful way to check the readability of your text across different devices is to use the Clip Studio Paint mobile app's companion mode to view it live on your phone screen. Since it updates in real time with your changes, you can tweak the font size and figure out the best size for your current format. Similarly, if you want to see how your traditional comic text looks at scale, you can always print a sample page out if you have access to a printer. To do so, go to File Print Settings and make sure you have the print size dropdown set to Scale According to Paper Size. Or if you don't have a printer, you can instead go to View Print Size. This will open up some display resolution settings. Using a ruler or measuring tape, hold it to your screen and adjust the slider until the displayed inches on screen match up with the ruler. 
This will ensure that, regardless of your screen dimensions, you can see what the actual printed size will turn out like without even using a printer. That's the basic rundown of some tools you can use for comic reformatting. In the next video, I'll cover a few more techniques and tools you can try to help make your comic making process even easier. Check the description below for my social media links and more tutorials. Thanks for watching, I hope to see you next time. Clip Studio Paint